So the semiconductor industry facing some major setbacks. The growing chip shortage now halting production. The Senate is supposed to vote on a bill that would give the industry $52 billion in funding and incentives. We need to stop playing catch up. The bottom line is simple. We're going to help revitalize our domestic manufacturing capacity. It's a huge vulnerability that we are aiming to fix. This is infrastructure. Semiconductors make modern life possible. If you look at what we've had to go through for the last year, whether you went to school from your house, you work from home, your consumer products, whether they be your washer and dryer, or your stove, they all run on semiconductors. 30 years ago, the U.S. made 37% of all the world's semiconductors. We now make 12. We have to make policy changes to ensure that we increase our manufacturing capacity in the United States. Semiconductors are one of, if not the, strategic industries that will drive the economy, national security moving forward. It's called a foundational technology because everything else depends on it. If the United States is going to level the playing field, then Congress has to pass CHIPS Act funding. Intel is doing its part to ensure that we have adequate manufacturing capacity in the United States, but we can't do it by ourselves. And the only way we're going to change this dynamic is partnering with the government. Semiconductors are vitally important to the defense industry and to our national security. One is just the basics. It's the building blocks for our advanced communications, for our network systems, for our weapons systems, things like the F-35, advanced hypersonics, artificial intelligence as we evolve our capacity. New cars have hundreds of microchips in them. And we've seen that some of the supply chain breakdowns for chips in the last six months or so have thrown a real wrench to the auto supply chain itself. If you're dependent on two or three plants to provide 70 or 80% of the chips you need, that's vulnerability. One of the concerns has been the majority of leading edge chips are currently made in Taiwan. This hyper concentration of advanced chip making in Asia makes us vulnerable to disruptions, whether it be natural disaster, whether it be geopolitical conflict or tensions, or perhaps another pandemic. These other countries, especially in Southeast Asia, provide huge subsidies for their domestic chip manufacturing. We're talking tens and tens of billions of dollars. So if you compare the cost to build a leading edge microchip fab in the U.S. versus Taiwan or China, if you add in labor costs, that makes it cost prohibitive. You need the tech industry if you want to stay ahead in this game. And that's why Congress is finally waking up enough to authorize bills to support the tech industry as good. We need to act now while we have focus that should we have another pandemic, should there be a conflict or tensions, that we are not held hostage to this very imbalanced situation. You don't want to be falling behind. You want to lead the field. And so that's why we need to fund the CHIPS Act. We invented this industry. We're, you know, in many ways still the drivers but we've got to close that gap. And in this case, I think a lot of the help's going to have to come from Congress, from Washington. It's not good enough just to have extra capacity here while we do value that. We also believe it's important for the U.S. to invest in this industry so it has its actual technological capability as a leader. And you can't do that if the United States doesn't invest. So this is not about party. This is not about politics. This is about everyday life in America. This is about our nation's defense. It's about all the things that are important to keeping us healthy as a country from a security and an economic perspective. We have an extraordinary opportunity to convert bipartisan support and focus to fund the CHIPS Act. The time to act is now.